What's good everybody, it's your boy Everton. Today we're talking about Turo and five things that you're gonna need in order to be really successful at hosting on Turo. Let's go ahead and get into it. So guys, I've actually been in renting with Turo for about two months now, almost two months, not there yet, and I have been consistently booked. It's really been um, a pretty amazing thing. Right now, the, my vehicle's in the parking lot. It's rare that it's here. It's usually booked up all the time, especially on the weekends. And there are a couple things that I've noticed that I had to invest in in order to make sure that, well, I can have a good experience, a lot of time, as much as possible, kind of safeguard myself. Because let's be clear, the platform is great, a lot of opportunity there, but it is risky and you're not going to go into this situation without accepting some risks, but there are things that you can get in order to mitigate some of those risks and also make hosting with Turo a bit easier and a little bit less stress. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing that I invested in was a portable vacuum. Um, this one right here is made by Sherilon. I'll throw a link to this one or all the items that I talk about in the description as I go on. But this is, I got this one and it's not the most powerful thing. It's basically a convenience item, but I got this one because it is battery powered. It does come with a charger. It does come with a few accessories which, in which you can swap out and um, attach. And basically just for those situations where there is an individual who lightly use a vehicle, but there's a little bit of, you know, dirt and things like that that you might need to wipe up and vacuum up some of those larger uh, clumps. Well, essentially this allows me to do that. And due to the attachments that it has, it definitely allows me to get into some of those uh, harder to reach areas when I'm doing my cleaning and doing my wiping down. And this is actually a saver because not every time that I actually get the vehicle back is it in need of a car wash. I, I usually do it, but sometimes it's so lightly used and somebody either ran it through a car wash right before they brought it back because maybe they dirtied it up a little bit, but they didn't clean it back all the way back to the you know the condition that you would like. So most of the heavy work is already done taken care of for you. You just need to maybe need to do some touch up, get some Clorox wipes, and this guy right here. Um, this is definitely, definitely a lifesaver. Um, it does, I have charged this maybe once since I've gotten it. I've used it maybe six or seven times. Um, it does come with a battery indicator, um, an attached accessory, and certain vehicles actually have outlets in which you could take advantage of where you could plug this up. This doesn't have a car adapter um, to it, but once again, it does have a battery, so you can charge it at home and have it ready for the next time that you're ready to take hold of your rental. Mine's a little bit dirty because I do use it. It's not hard, and I will tell you that it doesn't do great at picking up bigger items, so this will not replace the vacuum that you get at like a car wash or like the big heavy duty equipment. This is for smaller items that you don't need to go for a car wash for. The second thing I'm gonna talk about is something that you guys need to have if you guys are concerned about the safety of your car. Once again, the risk is there, right? The reward is there as well, but the risk, how do we mitigate the risk? Well, I have a car that has uh, is not GPS monitored. I don't have an app that I can track the vehicle for. So I did buy or invest in an actual uh, portable GPS that I can attach to my vehicle or put inside my vehicle. This here is called the Spark Nano 7. Um, one of the reasons why I went with this was because of the ability for it to use not only GPS, but a 4G signal as well. So when there is no GPS satellites available, it will use a cellular uh, signal to get the location. Um, it does have a lot of customizations with it. Um, I believe this one, I think I bought this one for maybe like 30 to 50 bucks, I can't remember, but um, it does come with an annual plan that you can purchase and it'll give you live tracking data, et cetera. Um, another thing is that it actually comes with a carrying case, which is very heavy duty. I'm gonna put it in here right now, clasp, clasp it down. And this thing has been on so many trips. It's very strong. I just took it off my vehicle and I was literally struggling to get it off with one hand um, based on how like excellent these magnets are. You can see it's been used. So you're definitely gonna see a little bit of rustiness there. But basically I just tucked this under the body of the, the vehicle and you know, um, Basically, make sure that, hey, if someone were to say, hey, the vehicle broke down, we had to leave it somewhere, I know exactly where this vehicle is, I can track it. And one of the, another great thing is that the battery life for the main plan here is about uh, two, two weeks, so about you know 14 days, but you can actually adjust the battery life um, by 
you know, lessening the frequency of how often you want to be able to track. So instead of it pinging every 30 seconds, you could change it to every two minutes, etc. If you don't need as detailed tracking, you just need to know where your item is. That way you can get it to stretch from two weeks to maybe a month, etc. Um, I have absolutely, this is probably one of the best ease of mind things that you would need. Think of this like insurance. You hope you don't ever need this, but boy, if you ever do need it, you will be glad that you had it. So the next thing is really like a quality of rental uh, piece. And one thing that I really don't like is when people smoke in the vehicle. And the reason why is because it takes so long to get that odor out of the vehicle. It gets trapped in the fabrics, it gets trapped in the AC filter, it gets trapped in the carpeting. And if you don't have leather seats, if you have like fabric seats, they'll get trapped in those fibers as well. Um, so one of the things that I do to make sure that people know without really having that uncomfortable discussion is putting one of these stickers there. I've talked about these briefly before. And once again, I'll, um, and they're fairly inexpensive. Um, I'll put a link to these here, but basically what you wanna do is um, have this, I put this right by the infotainment center. Center. Um, that way, if they want to use navigation, audio, um, anything, there's a sign right there. It's very prevalent that, hey, no smoking is allowed in this vehicle. And that, that relieves you of having to have a awkward conversation. Um, if you see that, hey, the guy that you're running to, he has a heavy cigarette odor smell or whatever type of smoke cigar smoke odor sent to him, you don't have to really necessarily be like, hey, just FYI. Not calling you out, but I don't allow smoking in the vehicle. You don't have to have that uncomfortable conversation. You should see this. It's pretty big and it's very obvious. Hey, no smoking in the vehicle. Just put it in a pretty obvious place and you should be good. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about, I actually don't have in my position right now because I actually used it recently and I need to buy some more, but it's basically like a scent odor remover, right? Now there's two that I actually really love. Now you can get the charcoal ones, but those ones attract odors and scents over a course of period of time. If you're very busy and you need to basically get the car out and to another renter, maybe the next day or within a couple hours, well, basically you might want to use something that's a little bit more expedient. I like to use these odor bombs, right? So um, I'm going to leave a link to the one that I really like. It's a new car scent. I found out that the perfume or scented ones, they do smell okay. Some people may not love them. So I go with the stock scent, like new car scent or something that's very neutralizing or a very neutral scent, things like that. But the scent bombs are great because you can actually uh, put it in your car. Um, there's a little, it works like a bug bomb. If you were to put a bug bomb inside of like a small area, those are for situations, not only for smoke, but hey, so I've had people who went hiking and you know, they were really sweaty, really musky, things like that. It happens to so all of, you know, it just happens. You can just, you know, make sure that you can do that. It takes about 30 minutes and you can have your next renter basically, you know, have a very good smelling vehicle with not a lot of heavy perfume or masking agent and it'll be ready for you within about 30 minutes. So you can get in and get out. So last thing I wanna tell you guys about is this thing right here is called KeyGuard. It's basically a lock box for remote check-ins, right? You can actually put your vehicle's key fob or key in here, uh, put it inside the car window, roll the window up, and this should sit perfectly outside for your renter when they actually come to pick up the, the vehicle. Now, a couple cool things about this here is that it is weatherproof for this model here, so I'll definitely leave it, the link to this model in the description. What you guys can do though is program your own code and you can actually change the code every time after it's been used. You just have to make sure that you write it down on what code you're going to use, etc. That way, if you rent to somebody and you feel like they might come back, and see your vehicle again with the lot box. They don't know what the code is. You could definitely program it on limited amounts of times. This is actually pretty cool because you know when times where you need to do a remote check in and you're not around the vehicle, um, you can just go ahead and have the client or the renter take a selfie with next to your vehicle, next to the license plate, and their valid license driver's license. Have them send it to you. Once you receive that, you give them the code. Right now, inside here, I actually had my keys. So I have my key fob to my personal car, a garage opener, and a towel. I'm gonna drop all these in here, all right? So let me just show you guys, I'm dropping, sorry about that, I'm dropping all these in here. I'm gonna lay them down flat, and I'm going to type in my code. And literally that simple, right? So as of right now, it is locked. You'll see that it doesn't come all the way down. Jerking it, opening it, all that stuff. I'm gonna punch in the code. 
and you'll see here that you can just pull it down and it opens up and the driver can grab their, grab their keys and go on their way. You can just instruct the driver, hey, or the renter, hey, go ahead and just drop this in the trunk or in the glove compartment, whichever you feel is safest. And they can, sorry about that, I didn't lock it back. But yeah, and they can go on about their merry way. Um, so I think it's super convenient, super easy, I love that. So last thing that you guys are gonna need is good communication skills. You guys are gonna need it. Um, communication is key. A lot of the people that are rent on this platform are new, so they're unfamiliar with the process. What I do every time is I send them a pre-written text that just lets them know everything that they are going to expect when they actually come to pick up the vehicle. Now, I don't tell them into great details because I think too much information is information overload for somebody who is new to the platform, but communication is going to really be key for your guys' success. That will determine if people want to rent with you again, if they feel confident in the process, that hey, I can just pick up the vehicle, you know, I won't have any issues, this guy's easy to communicate with, he's also thorough, he does this a lot. A lot of times people don't know exactly what to expect. If you could provide them with that, what to expect, you'll be fine. Just keep it simple, be positive, and be welcoming, and let them know that, hey, if they have any questions that they can reach out to you, communication and flexibility is going to be key. But either way, guys, that was just it. Five things that you need to invest in if you are gonna be doing Turo. But until next time, I'm Everton, and this is Everton's Experience. Peace.